Good afternoon. My name is Laura Fox, and today I'll be co-presenting with my colleague Matthew Roach on Arizona heat illness surveillance and interventions. I think all of us are pretty familiar with this weather forecast in Arizona during the summer. Consistent 110 plus degree days are pretty miserable for being outside and put people at risk for daily activities. At, this, at the time of making this presentation, there was a record 144 days over 100 degrees, but in its making, we tacked on another day to 145 degree days over 100 degrees in Phoenix in 2020, a new record. And how's this for a statistic? 50% of the days through October 14th this year have had a 100 degree day or more as a daily high. Woo! 2020 has been an unprecedented year of heat records. Phoenix hasn't seen this hot of a summer since 1989, when there were 143 days recorded with 100 degree temps. 2020 almost doubled the number of days above 110 degrees recorded in Phoenix, with 53 days with a high over 110 degrees. Same goes for the number of days with a low of 90 degrees or more in Phoenix, doubling the record with 28 days with a low of 90 degrees or more. There were 48 days when the National Weather Service issued heat warnings in the Phoenix area this year compared to the average number of 18 days per year, and the most was recorded for 25 days in 2010 and 2018. With this record-setting year, we have just started to see preliminary data showing increases in heat-related illness and death in 2020. At ADHS, we utilize three data sources to monitor and track heat illness in the state, including hospital discharge data, death records, and syndromic surveillance. Using hospital discharge data, we can examine the number of heat-related illness cases seen in the emergency department visits and hospitalizations annually. 2020 data won't be released till next spring, but we have seen an increasing trend in recent years for ED visits. From 2015 to 2019, there was an average of 2,800 emergency department visits per year due to heat-related illness. About 28% were middle-aged adults aged 45 to 64 years old, and the majority were male, white, non-Hispanics, Arizona residents, and cases occurred from May through September, or our heat season. We found that the preceding activity was either recreational or occupational for a lot of the cases, and the place of injury listed was private residence, street or highway, or at an industrial site. Heat-related hospitalizations have also had an increasing trend over the last several years. On average, between 2015 and 2019, there were 685 visits per year. 38% were middle-aged adults 45 to 64 years and the majority of cases were male, Arizona residents, and occurred from May till September. The median length of stay for a heat-related hospitalization was three days, and the preceding activity was listed as recreational or occupational, and the place of injury would have been private residence or street or highway. Following the same trend as heat-related illness, Heat-related deaths have also followed this increasing trajectory over the last decade. From 2015 to 2019, on average, there are about 229 deaths per year and exceeded 250 deaths in the last three years. Of note, as of checking on November 2nd, there were over 350 deaths recorded in 2020 so far in Arizona. And for Maricopa County, 
our most populous county in Arizona. As of October 31st, there were 207 confirmed heat deaths and 134 under investigation in 2020. The majority of heat deaths are male, are adults 45 years or older, and Arizona residents. Most deaths have occurred in Southern Arizona counties and occur during the May till September months. Lastly, we use syndromic surveillance to monitor heat-related illness trends in Arizona hospital facilities in near real time by identifying key terms and codes within the chief complaint field or the patient's stated reason for a visit and discharge diagnosis code fields, or ICD-10 codes. Heat-related illness visits are displayed as a percentage of total hospital visits by day or week and monitored for trends. Displayed here is the percent of daily visits due to heat-related illness in Arizona emergency department visits or facilities from April 1st through September 30th. Of note, with the combination of COVID-19 mitigation and prevention measures, such as the hospital elective surgeries postponed from March 21st till May 1st by executive order, the data captured in the beginning of the heat season may not be an accurate representation of the burden of heat-related illness experienced in the 2020 season. The peaks seen on the graph for most of July and August to correspond with the heat warnings issued by the National Weather Service. We can delve a little deeper into the data by examining data by county. Displayed here is a time series showing the percent of heat-related emergency department visits in Maricopa County from April 1st through September 30th in 2020, with an overlay of the minimum and maximum temperatures recorded each day at the Phoenix Airport. In 2019, we examined the economic burden of heat-related illness and death in our state using hospital discharge data to estimate the health costs associated with ED visits and hospitalizations, and then also used the EPA value of the statistical life to estimate the overall cost to society for heat-related mortality. Our preliminary analysis determined Heat-related illness emergency department visit charges totaled 136 million, hospitalizations charges totaled 308 million, and heat-related deaths cost 17.8 billion from 2008 through 2018. Adjusted for inflation using the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculator, about 40 million in charges per year for heat-related morbidity and 1.6 billion in costs per year for heat-related mortality. Similar to the increasing trends seen with ED visits and hospitalizations, the median charges per ED visit or admission is slowly increasing from 2008 through 2018. Adjusted for inflation, the median charge for a heat-related illness ED visit was almost $5,000 and for a hospitalization was about $35,000 in 2018. To view this data geographically, ADHS Environmental Public Health Tracking Program has a tool called the Data Explorer that displays heat illness and death data at county and sub-county level. We display this information on our Data Explorer in charts, graphs, and maps and it's available to download for personal use. You can also look at specific trends by county and by specific months of the heat season. Displayed here is the heat-related mortality during the summer months of May to September for 2016 through 2018. Displayed here is another view of the Data Explorer showing heat stress illness emergency department visits in 2019 at the sub-county level. The highest burden of illness is in the south and western parts of the state. You can also get a snapshot of extreme heat in your community by using the tracking program's quick report tool. Here you can see the number of heat-related ED visits 
in your areas, ways to prevent heat illness and cooling centers in your county, if available. This concludes the heat illness surveillance portion of the talk and my colleague Matt Roach will now describe heat interventions in Arizona. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Matt Roach, Epidemiology Program Manager with ADHS. I'll be co-presenting with Laura. We're gonna change gears a little bit. As you saw from the data, Arizona's heat-related impacts are the talk of news stories that many other parts of the country cite. They can't believe the types of consistent 100 degree temperatures we face. Preparing and responding to our extreme heat that is projected to get worse in the future is a task that exceeds public health alone. It takes many partners working together and many scales to make a positive impact. Current interventions by public health have included heat surveillance of illness and deaths to find out the risk factors of why these people got sick in the first place. This information helps us target strategies to prevent before they get to this point of a hospitalization or death, and also where in the state do we need to work harder with our interventions. Additionally, you will see health departments, the media, and National Weather Service push out heat advisories. For the last seven years, except for this year due to COVID, ADHS has been convening an annual state heat meeting with more than 100 participants each year. Many partners around the state establish cooling centers and send out public health messaging on how to prevent heat-related illness at places like hiking trails, as you see in this picture. Many organizations, including ADHS, develop emergency response plans to prepare for disasters such as heat waves during a massive power outage. These are just a few things going on around the state. Here's an intervention example. You can see the ADHS website showing information about a heat warning from the summer. Information on when it is occurring, where it is occurring, and what to do about it was shared to everyone visiting the site. The banner is one of many ways to get the word out. Many other agencies are doing similar approaches. ADHS maintains a heat safety website with a variety of information relevant to different audiences. This includes information on how to prevent, recognize, and treat heat-related illness, sign up for heat alerts, and access to heat-related statistics. Toolkits have also been developed with YouTube videos for heat safety messages targeted for older adults, outdoor workers, and schools. If you haven't heard this term before, a cooling center or cooling shelter is a public location, typically with air conditioning, that has been designed or designated to provide free respite from the heat. Some examples include libraries, community centers, and shopping malls. The photos shown are from various cooling centers around Maricopa County. In 2018, ADHS partnered with ASU and Yuma County to evaluate cooling centers. The county has promoting the existing centers, but was hoping to recruit more in areas of need. The image on the left shows a map that is posted on the county website and shared with community partners in the area that serve vulnerable populations, such as people who are homeless regarding places they can go to get out of the heat. The Yuma County Public Health Services District created an online intake form where cooling centers can register to get on this map. Information about their address and type of service and when they are open is asked. The map in the background marks existing cooling centers and from survey data in Yuma in red. The blue dots represent survey data for more than 200 residents in Yuma showing where they think additional cooling centers should be placed. The blue circles show an area that Yuma residents believe should have a cooling center, but there are currently none in that area. Yuma is currently working to change that with some recruitment efforts. Yuma got interested in evaluating cooling center efforts in Yuma because of their desire to expand the network of local partners and saw this as an opportunity for future network growth and improvements. A trained bilingual survey team from ASU ADHS and Yuma County went out in the field and used three surveys to gather data. Staff went out to talk with people who are homeless, cooling center facility managers, and older adults. The survey with people who are homeless was aided by Yuma County emergency planners. We were able to go to where they were congregations of people who are transient. We provided them heat safety resources such as cooling towels, 
bilingual heat safety materials, and a reusable water bottle to stay hydrated. We also voluntarily asked if they would share about their experiences with heat and knowledge of heat resources such as cooling centers. A few of the questions asked included, do you know what a cooling center is? Do you know where cooling centers are located in your area? How did you find out about them? Have you visited a cooling center? And how do you usually get to a cooling center? We had a great team comprised primarily of staff from Yuma County's Health Services District, along with staff from State Health Department and researchers from ASU. A particularly helpful part of this partnership was having access to local information about places in the county where individuals experiencing homelessness tend to spend time during the day. We were able to concentrate our efforts on a handful of commonly visited places, making the most effective use of the time we had that was volunteered from staff from many departments. The picture on the left shows some of the surveys being given. The middle picture shows wagons filled with heat safety resources being distributed, and the photo on the right of the phone shows a version of how we were able to electronically record responses. Here are some results from our older adult survey in Yuma. Respondents were mostly resident homeowners who lived in the area for more than five years, who have single family homes around 45 to 64 years old, predominantly white, largely female and work full time. There are many retirees, homemakers and part time workers. Overall, we had 144 surveys completed in English and Spanish online. From the chart, you can see that older adults are more familiar with the term cooling center, but a much lower percentage in the sample knew where cooling centers were located. About 10% of the older adults that completed the survey had ever visited a cooling center. Five Yuma cooling center managers were interviewed in November 2018 of the seven total facilities that operated that year. There was a mixture of faith-based and non-faith-based organizations. We heard some successes and some challenges from the facility managers. In terms of successes, most facilities reported having bilingual staff present. Very few identified any hard or soft costs associated with operating as a cooling center, but one facility noted electrical costs for running fans and charging phones. Facility managers also reported that their facilities were used and that most visitors spent about 15 minutes to a few hours there when they had a visitor. In terms of challenges, as has been reported in other cooling center evaluations, the hours that they were open were largely restricted to business hours. Most facilities said they were only open approximately from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Interestingly, many facilities reported that they were busiest in the morning. We also heard challenges related to water. Facilities reported handing out anywhere between a few bottles to a few cases per day. Three of the five managers were called running out of water in the past and all said that they were extremely reliant on donations for their water supply. And there has been an interest in a more centralized coordinated water distribution system. Here's a picture of the evaluation team in Yuma. One way that we communicated findings back to facilities was to package everything up in this orange infographic you see on the right, which has some key findings from our evaluation, such as 38% walked and 43% bike to cooling centers. One out of three people found out about these centers through someone they know. One surprising result for us doing the evaluation was that 58% of people responded that they had adverse heat effects, such as heat exhaustion, but only 41% felt their health was in danger. Switching from Yuma, I wanted to say that Maricopa County has a large heat relief network run by the Maricopa Association of Governments. Some of these sites were impacted during COVID. Early heat in April also caught organizers off guard in creating maps. For the last several years, ADHS, National Weather Service, and the media have partnered for an Arizona Heat Awareness Media campaign. In May 2020, we had 400,000 views on social media in a week, seeing our messages and on social media. Health departments can leverage their connection with TV meteorologists to broadcast heat safety messages. Here are some of the social media messages, some of the social media messages that were posted. You can see here that we spent 2,000 in advertising and reached 437,000 people. ADHS sends out heat alerts with warning information relayed from National Weather Service alerts. We then add tailored public health safety messages, such as recess precautions for school-aged children. We also have a list for the general public. Currently, we have over 4,000 school staff signed up, 
and 14,000 people signed up for our general alert. You can sign up at azhealth.gov slash heat. Every year, ADHS hosts the annual state heat meeting, where more than 100 people attend each year. Due to COVID-19, we had to cancel our in-person workshop this year. We are planning on holding a webinar next month that would cover a debrief of the 2020 heat season. The meeting and webinar are open to the public, but are usually represented by state and local government, media, nonprofits, elected officials, university researchers, and first responders. The picture on the right describes the types of topics covered, such as National Weather Service alerts, pet safety, heat health data, and home weatherization programs. If you don't know what the state weatherization program is, it is a program for low-income individuals where they can receive aid to fix their air conditioning or fix duct leaks to improve cooling for free. Around the state, we have partnered with Pinal County, whose epidemiologists reviewed real-time hospitalization data from chief complaints. We call this syndromic surveillance. Pinal County staff called heat cases to find out circumstances of their illness. They found that 26% of cases were indoors and 64% were outdoors. Regarding preceding activities, most of the cases, 42% said it was occupational related. Many health departments in Arizona have extreme heat emergency preparedness plans. ADHS has a plan that uses a tiered approach depending on National Weather Service heat warnings. Tiered responses escalate as prolonged heat days continue. Our highest tier is planning for response of a mass power outage during a heat wave. This summer, we sent out COVID-19 and heat combined safety messages. As you may have saw in the news, there were at times long lines at free outdoor testing sites where people may have been in line for hours to get a COVID test. We tried to send out reminders to use our air conditioning as a preventive step against heat illness if they are waiting in their car. Dangerous heat can rise quickly in cars in the sun. Additionally, we sent out messages for safety regarding outdoor healthcare personnel giving COVID tests that are in PPE. We reminded them to hydrate and take breaks in an air conditioning space to avoid heat illness. Another COVID-related activity with the heat is that ADHS contacted every outdoor testing site, more than 100. We informed them about how they could request and distribute heat safety brochures in English and Spanish to staff and people being tested, information on how to recognize, treat, and pre prevent heat illness. More than 5,000 brochures were distributed in one week. We distribute it during some of our long stretches of heat warnings this summer. Thank you for your attention and listening to us about heat safety. We hope we shocked you about the record heat in Arizona and informed you about the heat safety interventions going on around the state. We can now take any questions.